today is going to be a different video and it's going to talk about aptitude based varsity admission. It's about this article basically where the universities or varsity, that's just another word for university, where they're going to shift the emphasis away from academic grades to aptitude. If you don't know what's aptitude, aptitude is natural ability. And I feel that it's not really about the natural ability that you have, but the drive and the achievements that you gained outside of your school or in your school. <laughs> and they are going to use that achievement based kind of, or I would say outside work or volunteering experience for your, you know, admission to university. And I feel that it is a great shift or a great movement because <laughs> I, I've been a software developer and been in the startup industry for quite sh a short time, but I realized that not a lot of people are looking for people with a degree or who have very high scores. And they are just looking for people who are able to, you know, have the technical skills. And I think mostly soft skills also, a culture fit kind of skills. I don't know what that means. And before that, I want to talk about this point. The NUS, NCU and SMU no longer offer discretionary admissions, which is a scheme where they set aside 15% of the places for students who fall short of the entry cutoff score but may have other achievements. Well, I have an inside scoop on this. They don't really care about your other achievements. This 15% places is like a normal admission, but is mainly for students who are short of those 0 0.1 point in their GPA or that one point of their A-level points. That's it. This is just how it is. They don't really care about your achievements because they can't find someone who's a little bit, a little bit dumber, but have amazing achievements. And I think it's really good because now they're going to de demolish it. And they're going to hopefully look at your achievements more rather than your grades. I don't know, but I'm going to prove this hypothesis because I think my achievements is fucking amazing. <laughs> self brag uh you could say that but like i think i'm very confident because i have worked uh teaching kids needy students programming for a year plus and then at the same time i've worked at a startup for a year four months in programming and at the same time i also created a very small workshop for students to explore programming uh, at the same time, teaching them very basic drag and drop programming mm. and all of this. And I've also taught like university students in mobile development. So I have all of these achievements or experiences. And will that put it into this? I will use these achievements to see whether this hold up to what is going to be. But the sad thing is, right, my GPA is not exactly bad. If I have a shitty GPA, right, like for example, a GPA of 1.9, right, then it will be a very good uh, experiment because I feel that I have a GPA of 3.0, which I would say, I think it's, I don't know, according to Asians, it is below average. <laughs> I think average is 3.5 and above. So I have a 3.0 and I don't have a related diploma. <laughs> My diploma was in Applied Drama and Psychology, a very fun course that I went through, but uh, there isn't any course anymore due to the few amounts of students uh, they, are, they are experiencing in my previous school, which is Singapore Polytechnic. Shout out. Awesome Polytechnic. Love the McDonald's. Very cheap. Anyway, back to the point. So that is the inside scoop. This discretionary admission is not exactly great for those who really want to go to university. But with this aptitude, hopefully people with a drive and shitty GPA are able to get in because I believe from my experience as a software developer, I see that people who have the drive usually can do very well in the workplace because first of all, they love what they're doing and they are able, to, and second of all, soft skills are not being taught in school how to work with other people with other skills. Nobody teach you that. 
except for jobs. Aha! And your job sucks, good luck. You know, that kind of thing. So I feel that soft skills are really needed in the in the any job that you want. How to deal with people. That's something that your school or any university don't teach you. Maybe it's a touch and go topic, but in the end, it is something that I think is really needed. Yeah, anywho. So at the same time, technical or I would say skills that are very relevant in any kind of uh, business is I think much more important than that piece of paper. But I am thinking very hard and considering very hard whether to apply to university because my plan is to, you know, start a business. I'm already starting a business, but, you know, grow my YouTube channel, create online courses uh, for programming, teaching students, university students or anyone who wants to be a software developer because I've been through that and I think the experience going through a boot camp is not exactly great. It's not like... It is really for people who is very driven. You learn a lot of grits, but I think I can, you know, teach it at a well-paced or I would say your own pace kind of learning because universities or all this structured kind of education is really not for everyone, I would say, because sometimes you are slow, sometimes you are fast in certain kind of topics. And the thing is that I realized that People just need some time to just catch up on how to learn. Sorry, I'm going on a rant because I'm really passionate about this. Like, I think my purpose is to disrupt education. But anyway, another day for that topic. So, an aptitude. All right. So, the universities wants to commit to have 50%. So, half of the student intake will be based on their aptitude. Right. But how will I, what's the criteria for the aptitude? I will share with you that later. And I honestly think it's really good because for me, I think I tried applying and I did not get in, I think two or three years back. And I was kind of disappointed because I thought I was very confident <laughs> with my 3.0 GPA uh, to go into these universities. But my achievements back then as a rock climber and as a magician, uh, and I've, uh, you know, led a uh, camp with I guess that's leadership skills but they don't see me fit into any of the you know uh, what do you call it degree so I I'm fine with that I one door closed uh, many doors are open I am going actually going to uh, try my hands on being a unique kid as a 26 year old so yeah I'm going to show you all the aptitude admission in all the different universities. Let's see. All right, so aptitude-based admissions. I like how they numbered it to see how I think, right, to see <laughs> what exactly they are looking for. So if you are a medal winner at the International Olympiad, bio biology, chemistry, informatics, mathematics, and physics, we will take into very big consideration as a human when you when you put numbers right when you put numbers right you may have the intention to say that oh this is the first thing that we look into it then this is the second that second thing that we look into it third thing fourth thing fifth thing i think they have the intention to like maybe it's like oh if you have one of these qualities then great we will uh take into consideration uh on what experience you have just put bullet points. But if you put numbered and if I infer that shit, if I am a leadership position in a community organization, sports or athletic clubs outside school, I think I'm not, I'm not going to be as good at the as the person uh, on top. It's a bias that we have. And being a university, I don't know, put some uni university. User experience in this. Anywho, just, just my user experience showing. Second, represented Singapore in arts and sports. I like how they put arts first and then sports later because it's the typical uh, arts first and sports later. But I think they want to care more of their arts because they have the faculty of arts. Ah. <laughs> Next, they have active participation in community service and volunteer programs. Yep. That fits very well with me. I have excellent community service. I, <laughs> I think... Uh, Next, work experience relevant to the course applied. I do have. 
I'm I'm going to apply computer science, and I have uh, software engineering, development programming in a startup for a year plus. I mean, I'm running my own like uh, project in software development. I'm creating an app. Then I have like two two friends that uh, I'm working with. And lastly, key le- leadership position is community organizations. And you could say I have a position, maybe not leadership, but a position. Yeah. So I think I'm pretty good. So I have three and four. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, applicants who wish to be considered under this scheme must provide details under the outstanding achievements. Why do you say outstanding achievements? Just write achievements. Don't have to be outstanding. But I guess they are a university, they call the shows or criteria, and they want aptitude-based admissions. What if the person just don't like competing, you know, but is fucking good at math, you know? I don't know. And you have indicated in this section, you are strongly encouraged to provide an elaboration on the essay portion. Oh, I've got a lot of things to say, man. And yeah. In another video, I'll probably show my criteria, my my experiences, and maybe, maybe you judge for yourself whether I'm eligible to be in the university. All right, so this is for NUS, uh, the top school for I don't know what lah, but I think it's the top school. Next, we have NTU, Nanyang Technological University. So we have aptitude based admissions, and students' passion, interests, and strengths. Strengths means uh, meaning GPA. I don't know. Applicants with exceptional talents and outstanding achievements beyond CCA can be considered to a minimum level of academic perform subject to a minimum level so yeah like 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 I said uh, for admissions under ABA academic grades of relevant subjects may be an indication of aptitude as well okay and if you have one or more of the following achievements, you are encouraged to provide details under the ABA apl- application form. This is not really encouraging at all <laughs> for those who are passionate about certain things. Okay, first, winner in International Olympiads or International Science and Talent Search. Next, significant awards achievements in area relevant to program applied. Okay, uh, carded an uh, athlete or represented Singapore in arts or sports, such as Olympics, SEA, Asian, ASEAN game, Asian game, Asian games. Oh, I didn't know that's an Asian games. So, basically, the top two is talking about the relevancy of your experience. It's like the same as like you want to apply for a job. Uh, you have one to two years of experience for a junior position. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I don't know Okay now I'm um, Active involvement Yep I do have that Demonstrated excellence In leadership Entrepreneurship Arts and cultures And sports Right Demonstration of Aptitude Passion Oh now the ap- aptitude The word aptitude Is in the last part Okay, true portfolio relevant to the first choice program applied for this. This can be included competition project, activity program undertaken in related field of study. The key emphasis is relevance field of relevance field of program. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Right. In addition, you must submit an essay more, not more than three hundred words, and at least one and maximum two appraisals online. I will give three. <laughs> to support their applications, shortlisted must attend an interview with the supporting documents. And this is the appraisal form for the applicant, CCA and whatnot. And these are the key attributes they are looking for. Um, they are looking for a unicorn. That's what they are looking for. They are looking for a freaking unicorn. The unicorn must have all of these attributes. It is like a job search, you know, and then you see. Tons of skills that you feel like you are not able to acquire. But in the end, what I've realized is that not everyone has very good skills or competence in all of the skills. So I'm still going to apply. <laughs> that's what, <they're> not <laughs> that's what uh, they didn't teach in school. Like the skills that they present, it is ludicrous. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> like I don't know how... 
And the thing, uh, and the thing is, like, you can bullshit in your emissions, you can lie in your emissions. But I'm gonna be truthful because I don't think lying is great. You waste your time just thinking about a story and whatnot. So I'm just gonna tell the truth of what I've experienced, and I'm very, very, very confident that I'm able to reach one of it. <laughs> Self confidence, amazing, amazing, right? Aptitude base and they look into your intellect. Okay, okay, right. So the thing is, right, in their point of view, why are they looking for Olympiads or people who are good and in the STEM field, right? It's because they're a university, and university is a place for research, mostly on the STEM, uh, or I would say the science, technology, technology, uh, science and tech, math and whatnot, right? Because universities are the institution to help fund this research and such, which is fair enough. But yeah, lah, I want to disrupt education, and you give me aptitude with your Olympiad. Then how's yeah? Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> don't lose hope. <laughs> my thing, like yeah, just do you have to phrase it nicer? To people who really want to get into university, university, I mean, in terms of like having a degree to just get out from poverty is great because it is an achievement that a lot of people want. But if you want to use a different approach to have people inside your university, at least try to push off that grading. Okay, next. This SMU aptitude, uh, they don't have. They have only like a. Uh, let me search. Aptitude, right? So. Okay, I I like how short it is because they are not so anal about it. I'm not too sure. SMU recognize a diverse student body and they are taking account to contributions, which is great. And they were considered with good achievements and attributes to the SMU values, so very culture value kind of school, <laughs> and the ability to successfully complete an undergraduate degree, so supplement the core qualities. Yeah, right. So it's very short and sweet. I like it. So you don't feel so stressed about the vast skills that you need to be an excellent student. What the fuck? Like even a job, they don't. Even if they were to put in their key attributes they are looking for, they don't put this much. They maybe took put five. This is insane. You're looking for the next Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, and Mother Teresa all combined into one. Put in a splash of Barack Obama, but God, fuck. <laughs> Anywho, so SMU looks for good achievements in excellence and leadership in sports and arts. I feel so much happier reading this because they are not looking for Olympiads, which what these two universities are looking for. Uh, they might update it. Like, look at SMU, so nice, like welcoming, impactful leadership. Yes, second, yes, excellent. Significant awards and achievements in areas re relevant to the course applied, community service, and voluntary programs. Okay, I have. A beef with like this point, significant awards and achievement in areas relevant to the course applied. If I want to go for accounting and I was from maybe a uh, engineering diploma, how the fuck am I gonna have uh, awards and achievements in accounting? And yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> no worthy involvement in internship. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're from diploma. But if you're A-levels, maybe? I don't know. No worthy in entrepreneurial activity. Entrepreneur. Start my own business. I created my own company. Zukunf. <laughs> Ability to overcome significant difficult life change. Oh my god. This is so PD. It's personal development. I overcame a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so applicants are to provide details in personal statement section of the online application form for admission and submit copies of supporting documents where available to attest these achievements. So I feel that, right, the aptitude uh, based admission should have a different type of admission because I think it is nonsensical to place this 
aptitude based admission into the same admission i i guess it's easier for people to see it but like what's the criteria like you filter down all those who have very good gpas then how do you filter down for those who don't have good gpas but maybe have all of these different qualities that they have or achievements and experiences that they have how are they going to do that i'm talking in the tech kind of person like they going to do if else statement no like it's worse so how are they going to do it is there like a checkbox i don't know i'm going to apply for all of these universities that i've 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 walked through with you guys we see how it works you know like it works or not because i think i have great achievements that i achieve i i i didn't win awards but yeah i mean because university is still a business they are trying to attract talents or students right so if you have people who are good at winning competitions and they represent the school at competitions it worked out very well all right let's go next one next one as utd singapore university technological design first of all i want to you know talk about their header and it's a bit too much because you are blocking the white you know text so it's bad user experience Anywho, all right. So admissions are uh, aptitude. So confine aptitude. There's no aptitude. Ooh, ooh. Well, as UTD, you don't have aptitude. They don't have aptitude. Oh no, you're not in the trend, as UTD. Okay, as UTD, don't support our uh, aptitude based admission then. Next, SUSS. So let me go to their full time. See whether they have the word. Hmm. They don't yep okay next sit oh, oh, oh. ah sit adopts an aptitude base yes assessing your application holistically excellent beyond your grades we'll consider your prior experience be through internship cca and other demonstration of passion and interest for chosen or field of study very good very short and sweet i'm like having a review for this so yeah it's, that's great i think this is the best <laughs> was like Okay, let's try. Like a student comes in and like, oh, okay, okay, that's great. Work experience, CCI, and your passion, and interests. That's really great. It's like a bit vague, but no, oh, very. Like I think I love SMU the most because, except for their admission, ah, because you have to put inside your personal statement. <laughs> like come on, I have some admission based kind of thing. Well, we'll see how. So I think that's it for. Oh my god, thirty minutes. That's it for me talking about aptitude based admissions for universities i'm going to try it i'm 26 years old i have a couple of work experience and volunteering experience don't have leadership though but doesn't matter we'll see how it goes yeah so thank you for watching hope you guys have a nice day leave a comment down below if you agree if uh comment down below on what improvements you can find in these aptitude-based admissions. Alright, so see ya. Bye-bye.